Today's lesson is called Travel Emergencies. Don't get caught unprepared. Hello, everyone. My name is Jeff, and I'm Roger. And today we're going traveling. And of course, as you know, when you go traveling, you're going to have fun. Everything is going to go smoothly for you, and you're going to come back home and tell everybody all about it that you had the time of your life and nothing terrible happened. How could something bad happen if you're on vacation? You're supposed to have fun. You're supposed to have a good time. Yeah, but sometimes bad things do happen when we're traveling. So you know. What the best thing that we can do, okay? The most responsible thing that we can do as well is to be prepared for anything, especially these bad things that can happen while traveling. These travel emergencies, like the one thing that I fear the most when I'm traveling internationally, is losing my passport. Okay, that would constitute a travel emergency. Okay, if you lose your passport, you're gonna have a hard time getting out of and into. Other countries, so yes, that constitutes definitely a travel emergency. Anyways, folks, with that, it's time for us to take a short break. But don't go away. When we come back, we'll start talking about travel emergencies and how to handle them. Okay, the idea here is preparation is the key. You have to be prepared for these things before they happen. Travel emergencies. Don't get caught unprepared. A vacation is supposed to be a time to enjoy yourself, but that isn't how it always ends up. Sometimes unexpected things happen that turn your trip into a nightmare. To minimize the damage, it's wise to be prepared. 大家好，标题中我们看到单字 emergency， 这个字是名词，指紧急情况、突发事件。例如 ，We put aside some money each month in case of an emergency. 我们每个月会存一笔钱以防突发事件发生。接着，我们看到一个名词 nightmare， 课文中指如噩梦般可怕、不愉快的事。像是 Phil said that his awkward first date was an absolute nightmare. Phil 说他尴尬的第一次约会简直是场梦魇。另外 ，nightmare 除了上面的意思。还可以指噩梦。我们可以说 ，The doctor said that it was pressure that caused Peter to have a lot of nightmares lately. 医生说是压力造成 Peter 近来常做噩梦。再来，我们看到单字 minimize 这个字是动词，有使减到最少、降到最低的意思。举例来说 ，John decided to devote his life to minimizing the damage his mistakes had caused. John 决定将人生致力于尽量降低他犯的错所造成的伤害。另外，补充 minimize 的反义词 maximize，m a x i m i z e maximize， 指使最大化到最大限度。我们可以说 ，Carla came up with a great idea to maximize her company's profits by cutting production costs. Carla 想到一个很棒的方法。借由降低制作成本，使公司利润极大化。Okay, everybody. Now the first part of our lesson is an introduction to our subject. And if you're writing an essay or giving a speech, this is a good pattern to follow. Here, the first paragraph just kind of introduces the subject and prepares the audience. For what you're going to talk about, so then you can actually get into the matter itself and start talking. But in this particular case, the subject for today's lesson is travel emergencies—emergencies emergencies that happen when you're traveling, and they could be all sorts of things that require immediate attention. Maybe you lost your passport, you lost your luggage, you were involved in an accident, or somebody robbed you, or something like that, or maybe you were involved in a crime that wasn't your fault. But the police have arrested you, or something like that. These are all travel emergencies, and you need to be prepared for those emergencies. Don't get caught unprepared. Yes, be prepared in case of emergencies. And like Roger said before, hey, preparation is key, especially when it comes to bad, unexpected events like emergencies. Anyways, yes, a vacation. Our article begins. 
A vacation is supposed to be a time to enjoy yourself, but that isn't how it always ends up. Yes, sometimes unexpected things happen that turn your trip into a nightmare. So there you go, an unexpected thing that's bad. That's an emergency, and yes, sometimes travel emergencies can turn your dream vacation into a nightmare. By the way, here we have the word nightmare. A nightmare is a bad dream. So you're going on a vacation. It's supposed to be a dream vacation. It's supposed to be one of the great trips you'll ever take in your life. But sometimes that dream can go sour. It can go south quite. Quickly, it can turn into a nightmare, a very bad dream that might wake you up in the middle of the night with cold sweat coming out of your pores. Anyways, you could say something like this: As a child, Fred had nightmares almost every night. The poor boy. Sometimes people, of course, have nightmares every night if they've、uh, lived through a rather difficult experience, like soldiers in war or something like that, or victims of assault or something like that. They might have nightmares for the rest of their lives. But in any case, here, of course, you don't want your trip to turn into a nightmare. You don't want to end up in the emergency room somewhere, and you don't want to end up dead. But in any case, you want to minimize the damage. So to minimize the damage. It's wise to be prepared. So here you want to minimize the damage. You want to make the damage as little as possible. Sometimes these things do happen when you're traveling. You might accidentally break a leg or something, or have some sort of conflict, or forget some kind of document, or be robbed or something. So you want to lessen the damage. Okay, maybe you can't totally prevent it, but you want to minimize the damage. There you go. To minimize the damage. Be prepared. It's wise to be prepared. So yes, there will be some damage because there has been this emergency. But if you are prepared, you can minimize this damage. You can reduce the amount of damage that this emergency is going to have on your trip. Anyways, let's take a look at an example sentence for the verb minimize. You could say, "Thanks to hard work and diligence, we were able to minimize the company's losses this quarter." That's what、uh, bosses are always interested in: minimizing losses or minimizing expenses, so you don't spend so much money. And for me, of course, the best way to minimize damage from traveling is to simply not go traveling. I haven't gone traveling very much at all, so how can things happen? To me, if you don't travel, but, yeah, but you got you got to live there, right? Yeah, I know. Who wants travel, to live like that?、Yeah. There's a big world out there. There's lots of places to go and check out. So, yeah, maybe I should change my mind on that, or take our author's advice here and、uh, be prepared, and then maybe things won't go so bad. Okay, let's move on now to the next part of our lesson. We'll listen to it first, and then we'll chat about it. One of the most frustrating travel emergencies is losing your luggage. If this happens to you, make a report to the airline right away. You'll be asked to describe your lost luggage, so it's a good idea to take pictures of your bags before your trip. Second part, we see a verb phrase frustrating, which makes people angry. For example, Leo had a frustrating month after making a study of investors. Leo had a frustrating month after making a study of investments that didn't perform well. 花了一个月研究表现不好的投资，对 Leo 来说是沮丧的。这边补充相关的单字 ：frustrate, f r u s t r a t e, frustrate。这个字是动词，有使懊恼、使沮丧之意。我们可以说。Amanda got really frustrated when her proposal was rejected for the third time. 当 Amanda 的提案被拒绝第三次时，她感到非常沮丧。如果在 frustrate 的字尾加上 d， 就可以成为形容词 frustrated， 指某人挫败的、泄气的。所以可以说 ，Wendy felt very frustrated that the goods she ordered still hadn't arrived. Wendy 订购的商品还没到货。他觉得很不满意。Roger， 嗯哼。
Have you ever lost your luggage while traveling? Well, sort of. Uh, a couple years ago, when we were coming back from a trip to the U.S.,、uh, they lost a suitcase of ours. But I knew exactly why because our connections were so tight in、uh, Denver and in San Francisco. We were running through the airport, and I was thinking, "Gee, it will be a miracle if they can transfer our luggage from one plane to another." And、uh, miraculously, yes, that's what happened. We got most of our suitcases except for one, but they delivered. Delivered it to us the next day. So that's pretty good. And also, the fact that you were on your way home when you lost that piece of baggage or that piece of luggage—that's a good thing too. One time, I lost my bag, and I was on my way to Germany. So I arrived in a foreign country, and you know what? I stood at the carousel there, the luggage carousel, for an hour, and then it dawned on me. They lost my bag.、Oh, Here、no. I am. I'm in Germany. I don't speak any German. I'm all alone. Oh my goodness! What am I going to do? Yes, that was an emergency for me. For two days, I had to wear the same clothes until they finally found my bag. It was not a good start to my trip, but the rest of the trip was fantastic. Anyways, yes, one of the most frustrating travel emergencies is losing your luggage, especially if you're. On the first leg of your journey, you're heading to that foreign place. Yeah, if you lose your luggage and you're on your way home, you can just go home for the most part. You've got stuff; your stuff is already there. But if you're in a foreign country and you don't have any of your luggage, that can be a disaster. Anyways, we've got two vocabulary words to talk about here. The first of these words is the word frustrating. If something is frustrating, it really makes you. Angry. You don't want to shout or fight or anything like that, but you're extremely aggravated or irritated and just a little bit mad about things because you can't solve a problem or something like that. For example, you could say, "The dentist rescheduled your appointment at the last minute." Oh, that's so frustrating. Or I'm trying to memorize 100 new vocabulary words and I just can't do it. I feel so frustrated. So here, of course, you might feel frustrated if you're traveling. Please note, some people say frustrating. I think I've heard British people pronounce it that way, but Americans tend to put the accent on the first syllable. Frustrating. I feel so frustrated. Or this situation is very frustrating. And of course, yes, it's very frustrating. Frustrating when you lose your luggage, and be careful with this word luggage. That refers to your suitcases, your bags, maybe even your backpacks. But do not add an s to this word. Don't do that because luggage is non-count. Suitcases you can count those. Bags you can count those. Backpacks you can count those. But luggage, well, it's just too complicated to try to count it. So it's a non-count noun. Luggage. How much luggage did you bring with you、uh, on your trip to? Europe. There you go. Now you can say, "Oh, I brought eight pieces of luggage." That's、mm. okay, but you can't say luggages, and you can't say baggages either. Yeah, you can call your luggage your baggage. Okay, but remember, luggage and baggage, leave them alone. Anyways, here's another example sentence for the word luggage. You could say. Did you check any bags? No, I've got all of my luggage with me. Anyways, let's move on. The next sentence says, "If this happens to you, if you lose your luggage while traveling, if this happens to you, make a report to the airline right away." Right, and that's what we did. Of course, when we realized that one of our suitcases was missing, we made a report to the airline right away. Gee, was it Delta or United? I can't remember. It was a long time ago. But you'll be asked to describe your lost luggage, so it's a good idea to take pictures of your bags before your trip. So yes, indeed, they're going to ask you what color it is, how big it is, maybe how many zippers it has. Does it have any special markings or anything like that? Yes, indeed, you'll need to describe it. So yes, before you head out, take some pictures of your bags, of your suitcases, of your luggage. It's easy to do. Just use your smartphone. You can take all the pictures you want. Another good tip: I don't have to take pictures of my bags, okay? Because I always buy really ugly baggage. I'm not joking. When I buy a suitcase, I make sure it's like pink 
or gold or neon green or something like that. It'll be the only bag that looks like that. So I've I've had pretty good luck since I lost my bags in Germany that one time. I've always bought ugly looking bags and that has always done the trick. I always find my bags easily. And yes, if someone does happen to misplace one of my bags, I can describe it quite easily. Anyways, folks, with that, it's time for us to take a break, but don't go away. When we come back, we'll be wrapping up the first part of our lesson on travel emergencies. Perhaps even more nerve-wracking than lost luggage is a missing wallet or purse. To ease the trouble this can cause, have a few sources of money ready. Bring cash for daily use, an ATM card for cash withdrawals, and a credit card for emergencies. Keep them separate so that if one gets lost, you'll still be left with some means. If it's your ATM or credit card that goes missing, you'll need to call your bank or credit card company. So write down their telephone numbers and your card numbers. Lastly, a lost or stolen passport means a trip to the embassy. To speed up getting a replacement, travel with a photocopy of your passport. 第三部分，我们看到一个单字 nerve wracking。这个字是形容词，指使人焦虑、紧张的。亦可拼作 nerve wracking， n e r v e w r a c k i n g， nerve wracking。举例来说 ，Can someone please find out where that nerve wracking noise is coming from？ 请问有没有人可以找到那个令人焦虑的声音是从哪里发出来的？接下来我们看到名词 withdrawal， 课文中指提款，像是 Emily made a large withdrawal from the bank before she went on vacation. Emily 在她要出发旅行前到银行提了很多钱。最后我们看到名词 embassy， 用来指大使馆，例如 If you lost your passport during the trip, you will need to go to the embassy. 如果你在旅途中遗失护照，你就必须去一趟大使馆。另外，补充 embassy 相关的单字 ambassador, a m b a s s a d o r, ambassador 指大使。我们可以说 Tracy has been working as an ambassador in Paris for over ten years. Tracy 在巴黎担任大使已经超过十年了。Now let's talk about the next part of our lesson here. Of course, when you travel, you need to have something to put your money in and your cards and other things like that. So that, of course, can be your wallet, or if you're a lady, your purse. Okay, of course, you could have a wallet inside your purse.、Uh, you could also have some kind of、uh, waste bag or something like that. But in this particular case, though, we're describing this as being very nerve-wracking if you lose those things. So this sentence here says, perhaps even more nerve-wracking than lost luggage is a missing wallet or purse. Now, if you describe something as nerve-wracking, that just means it upsets you, it makes you really nervous, it causes big problems. Yeah, if you lose your wallet, my goodness, all your credit cards are in there, your ID—that's no laughing matter. Yep. Losing a wallet or a purse can constitute a travel emergency. That's for sure. So, to ease the trouble this can cause, have a few sources of money ready. Okay, first, bring cash. Bring cash for daily use. Then, also bring an ATM card for cash withdrawals, and then also. Also bring a credit card for emergencies. Okay, and here's the most important thing: don't put all three of these things in one place. Okay, if you put them all in your wallet or you put them all in your purse, if you lose your wallet or purse, you're gonna lose everything. So bring cash, a debit card, and a credit card, but keep these three things in three separate safe places. Right. Don't put everything in your wallet because if a pickpocket comes and takes that wallet, then you've lost everything.、Uh, this happened to me when I was in Mexico City. Somebody pickpocketed me on the train there, but fortunately. I was smart. I left most of my money back at the hotel, and I only had what maybe five hundred, six hundred pesos 
in the wallet at the time, and some useless credit cards like a Philips 66 card. I didn't have my Visa in there at the time, so it was okay, and、uh, that can happen. So I guess that's kind of based on this advice here. Keep those things separate. Bring some cash for daily use. Don't bring all your cash in the wallet, and also an ATM card. For cash withdrawals, automatic teller machine is what ATM stands for, and withdrawal here is the process of taking money out of the bank. The verb is to withdraw, to withdraw money from an ATM, and also you need a credit card for emergencies. But the point here is to keep those things all separate. So if somebody steals your wallet, you only lose one, maybe two of those things. There you go. Keep them separate. So that if one gets lost, you'll still be left with some means. Now, if it's your ATM or credit card that goes missing, you'll need to call your bank or credit card company. So write down their telephone numbers and your card numbers. This will help when you call that company, that credit card company, let's say, or your bank, and you try to turn off or cancel your cards. Exactly. So that's what you should do. And again, keep those numbers and telephone numbers in a separate place, so that if your wallet gets stolen, you don't lose those numbers as well. That would be stupid. Now, lastly, a lost or stolen passport means a trip to the embassy to speed up getting a replacement. Travel with a photocopy of your passport. Of course,、uh, an embassy, of course, is an official. A、building where a government serves its citizens in a foreign country, of course, because of Taiwan's situation here, there are very few embassies. Most of them are like travel offices or things like that. But in this particular case, if you lose your passport, you got to go to the embassy to get that passport replaced, or at least to speed up getting that replacement. There you go. Here's an example sentence for the word embassy. AIT serves as the American embassy here in Taiwan. All right, everyone. With that, it's time for us to take a break. But don't go away. The Chinese teacher is waiting in the wings. Hello, students. Hello, everyone. 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 But that isn't how it always ends up. 假期应该是玩得开心的时刻，但结果并非总是如此。这边有两个重点。好，第一个是 be supposed to 加上原形动词，这是用来表达应该怎么样，被预期应该要怎么样。那在这个用法里面 ，be 动词是用现在式。举例来说 ，What time is the train supposed to arrive? 火车应该几点抵达呢？好，那这个句型里面的 be 动词改成过去式的话呢，它是用来表达本来应该怎么样，原本应该怎么样，却没有怎么样。这通常是指说已经发生的事情没有像我们当初预期一样。例如 ，The train was supposed to arrive ten minutes ago. 火车原本应该十分钟前抵达的，可是实际上却没有，所以我们是用 was supposed to 这个 be 动词，是用过去式哦。好，另外要介绍的是片语动词 end up。End up， 它表示最后处于怎么样，以什么样的状况告终。那常常是用来表达说，在你没有预期的情况下，结果变成怎么样。End up， 它是不及物用法，所以我们后面要接补语。这个补语呢，你可以用形容词、现在分词、过去分词，或者是介系词片语。举例来说 ，They were supposed to go to the movies， but they ended up Playing video games at home. They originally wanted to watch a movie, but ended up playing video games at home. Okay, so we used the verb "were supposed to" to express what it was supposed to be. The second verb used "ended up playing video games." This is "ended up" in the end of the verb. The verb "ended up" in the end of the verb. The verb "ended up" in the end of the verb. The verb "ended up" in the end of the verb. The verb "ended up" in the end of the verb. The verb "ended up" in the end of the verb. The verb "ended up" Perhaps even more nerve-wracking than lost luggage is a missing wallet or purse. 或许啊，比遗失行李更令人伤脑筋的是弄丢皮夹或是钱包。好，这个句子呢，它其实是把主词补语移到句首的倒装句
。我们来看它的句型结构 ，perhaps even more nerve-wracking than lost luggage。它是主词补语，后面接 is 是动词，再接 a missing wallet or purse。它是主词，所以我们看到句型结构是主词补语加动词加主词。好，那我们把它还原变成主词加动词加主词补语的话，这个句子会念作 A missing wallet or purse is perhaps even more nerve-wracking than lost luggage. 好，那同学们可能会很疑惑说，那为什么要把主词补语移到句首呢？好，一般来说啊，当我们要强调主词补语。或者是说主词它比较长，像有些主词后面可能会带有修饰语。那为了避免让这个句子显得头重脚轻，我们就会把主词补语移到句首。那主词补语移到句首的时候，要记得主词和动词要倒装哦。举例来说 ，The strange man that I saw yesterday is standing over there。我昨天看到的那名奇怪男子就站在那里。好，这个句子里面的主词比较长。The strange man， 奇怪的男子，他后面带了形容词短句 that I saw yesterday。好，那我们这时候呢，为了避免头重脚轻，就可以把主词补语 standing over there 移到句首。记得要把 be 动词 is 移到主词的前方，形成倒装。这时候句子就会念作 standing over there。Is the strange man that I saw yesterday? 好，其实这也比较有画面。我先跟你说 ，standing over there， 站在那里，你的眼睛就会先看过去，然后我再把我的主词带出来，也就是我昨天看到的那一名奇怪男子。好，以上是今天的重点整理，我们来回顾今天的单词吧。Emergency. Preparing for an emergency in advance will help you keep calm if one actually happens. Nightmare. Our group project ended up being a nightmare after two of our members got into a fight. Frustrating. The bank is most crowded during lunch, so going at that time can be very frustrating. Luggage. The airport has carts to make it easier to carry several pieces of luggage at once. Embassy. You should go to your embassy if you have any trouble abroad. Okay, everyone. With that, today's article is now complete. But as always, we sure hope that you guys have enjoyed reading along with us. Anyways, I'm Jeff. I am Roger. See, See you next, next time. time.